Hi everyone, welcome to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy and I'm going to show you how to make this square that um, is part of my crochet along. And um, there are just three colours in, in this particular project. I have an ivory and a light pink and a darker pink and that's all the colours that are involved. Um, I do have different yarns um, but they are very comparable and I'm using some really inexpensive yarns. Um, this one is from B&M stores in the UK and these two are from Pound Stretcher but they are really lovely and soft and um, they've been working up really well so they're kind of excellent quality so I'm going to use those and I'm also I have a normal scissors and darning needle pretty standard and a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook so I'm going to get started but before I do if I could just ask you please to um, subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification bell you'll be informed when there are new tutorials and videos lots of live streams and blogs and everything and uh, if you hit that all button then you will get notified when when they're up so um, I'm just going to pause it then and get ready and I'll come back to you and we'll get started. For those of you quite regular to my channel, if you've seen it before, you might have noticed that I do have a mosaic square already on my channel, but this one is different. So that's why I'm going to show you again. I've made it larger and it is slightly different. So I'm going to start this with a slip knot and you can do that however you normally do your slip knot and it's going to start with five chain so I just need to wipe my hook it's got a little bit it's starting to squeak and I don't like it when they squeak so yeah if you haven't uh, already noticed this hook is a tulip rose um, and at the moment I'm trialing the tulip hooks I every now and then I make that a bit small I do um, kind of pick a, a brand of hook and I use them for a period of time and then I review them so at the moment I'm using the tulip etimo and the tulip rose and just to see how I get on with those and they're this lovely shiny silver which um, I'm getting on with quite well so far so anyway we're going to make five chain and it's yarn over and pull it through that loop yarn over and pull through so I just want five and then I'm going to make a ring by slip stitching into this very first stitch, this very first chain. And we do that by just yarning over and pulling it through both. So now we have our ring and I'm going to start this the way that most granny squares do begin. So that's two chain to get me up to the correct height. Some will tell you three, but I never do three. I only ever do two for this stitch. And this stitch is a UK treble crochet, which in the US is a double crochet. And we yarn over, go into the center of our ring, yarn over and pull up the loop. So we've got three, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So with these two chain, that's gonna class as two. And we want three. So it's yarn over back into that ring, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over pull through two now I do one chain and then I'm going to do another three so these are I'm just going to refer to these not as shells but as cluster so we have a cluster of three and I'm going to show you how to do this um, square seamless as well so um, it'll make it look so much better when you can't spot where the join is so I'm going to do another lot of three we want four lots of three all together separated by the one chain so I have three 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 and so I'm on my last lot of three into the same space and if you want to you can pull it over slightly to make more room and I've been working over the tail because it's a really good one that you can just get rid of if you've worked over it okay so now I would normally do a chain but I'm not going to on this instance I'm going to yarn over 
and I'm going to go into this top chain. There's the first chain I did, the second chain I did, and I'm just going to go into there. Now, it doesn't matter if you can't get into these two loops, like the top two loops, like this. It doesn't matter. You can go in anyway. But I'm going to pull my yarn through. So I've got three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over. I'm not changing colour, so I'm going to just yarn over and go through all three. And now I'm right in the centre of this gap, which is what I need. So I always try my best um, to uh, make it look as if there's you can't see any of my colour changes or joins. And so I always get into this habit if I can. I'll go into that. See, there's my three. And this is my gap. There's the gap, the gap there. So what I do is I try my, I always go into that gap and yarn over and pull it up. So I've got two on my hook and yarn over and pull through both. And I class that as my first chain. And then I do my second chain. So I'm now up to the height I need. And in this same space, I'm going to do my two um, UK trebles US doubles to complete that three. Does that make any sense? So that is half of a corner now. That will make more sense when I get back round here. So in we ignore these three stitches here and we go straight to this gap and we're going to do a full corner. This is half a corner. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go into there and we're going to do our cluster of three just as we have been all the way through so far. And we're going to do one chain and in the same space, another cluster of three. And that helps us now turn a corner and give us our shape. I just need to pull out some yarn. So as you can see, we've got half a corner, a full corner. So now we skip over these three stitches to our next space and we'll do a full corner in there. So these two rows, rounds, are exactly the same as any normal granny square, apart from the seamless corner. So I'm just going to finish this corner, then I've got one more full one to do, but as you can see, it's taken on a square shape. So one more corner. And then we're back to the half corner. My last stitch. So now we're going to finish off this corner we started by doing three more in that space. And to make it seamless, we're going to do the same as we did before. I'm going to zoom in because it's very difficult to see this colour. But I wanted to start with ivory. All of the dimensions and everything you're going to need will be in video one. This is uh, part two of the cowl. So that you just go into the top chain. Remember, there's the first one. You see the V. There's the second one. Just go into there. You can try and get into both loops. It's hard to do that with a camera in the way. So we've got three on our hook. Now, normally speaking, I would yarn over and pull through, but I want to change my colour. So I'm going to zoom out a bit because I'm quite zoomed in. And all I'm going to do is leave a nice tail length and snip, snip that off. I'm just going to move that colour out of the way. And I'm going to bring in my second colour, which is this light pink. As I said, all of the... Um, details of the yarns etc is in video number one all of the um, things you need to do this crochet along are in there so if you haven't seen that already there'll be a link at the end okay so I'm going to hold on to that yarn in my fingers behind and bring this one in and hold them together now with this finger and I'm just going to yarn over and pull through all three so you can join your yarn however you normally do 
but um, I get a little bit of um, stick sometimes because I tie them. I like them to be ultra secure. So even if my tails work their way out, which tails can sometimes do, I know that they are ultra secure. Just my paranoia, I guess. So now we have changed colour. And that's where this little thing I do is more important because obviously this is the same colour as the previous round, but this one's different. So I go in, get rid of those tails out of the way because they're going to confuse the issue. I'm going to pull up my yarn, complete my first chain and my second chain. So now in this same space, I'm going to do two UK trebles, US doubles to complete my cluster of three, which is this half corner. So I'll come back all the way around and finish that off as before. So I'm just going to move this out the way. Now this is where it gets different and we have to pay attention. So the first gap here, this one is where we would normally do our cluster of three and we're going to start it normally. But now we're going to yarn over twice and instead of going in here, we're going to drop down and go into the center of these three and we're going to go around that stitch with our hook and then we're going to yarn over and pull it right up. And we have to pull it right up because otherwise it will dip down this stitch. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through the remaining two. So we've got an extra long stitch going around this one two rows beneath. And that's the first stitch, that's the second. So a cluster of three, we need to pull that aside. And there's our space that we were in and complete it. So we've got a normal stitch, an extra long one, but we must pull up because even if you do pull up, it will still kind of, well, it's not too bad, but as you can see, it's, it will kind of pull in. But we need to pull up because even though we're doing an extra long stitch, we still need to. So that stitch in the UK is called a double treble, but in the US, that's a treble crochet. So our first one is in our gap normally. Then we do our long one into the row below the center of the, th the th uh, cluster of three. And then the third one is just the same as the first one in that space. So now we just do a normal corner. Thank goodness for that, I hear you say. Back to some kind of normality. So we just do our three UK trebles, US doubles, one chain and another three. And then we've got to repeat that side all over again. So we do our first stitch as normal in that space yarn over twice find the row beneath in the center one and we're going to put our hook in and back up the other side so we've gone round the back of it and we're going to yarn over pull it right up and then we're going to yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two and so then we're going to move it aside find the gap again where we're, our first one's gone in and complete our three and then we're going to do a normal corner just as we did the other side I'm sorry if you can hear my fan but I couldn't function without it I'm afraid so now we're back here and we've got to do the same thing all over again. So our first one, as normal, yarn over twice, find the one beneath, the row beneath the centre one, and we're going to go around that stitch, yarn over and pull our yarn through and up, yarn over through two, through two, through the last two. And then just pull it aside and you'll see your gap to make your last one. Normal corner. Oh, 
pull some yarn out, I think. And then complete that corner. And then we're going to do our last side so that into the space as normal. Yarn over twice into the stitch beneath, yarn over and pull it right up and then complete the stitch. And then back into that first space. And now we're back at the corner, so we're going to do our last three stitches of that corner. And you've guessed it, we're going to do the same thing at this corner, which is in the UK called a half treble, or in the US a half double. So we're going to go in, let's zoom in a bit, because it's very difficult to see it through the camera. There's the first chain, there's the second chain, so I'm going to go into the top two loops. You don't have to, if you can't get into those, that's fine. And I'm going to pull it up. So I'm going to keep this colour. So I'll complete my stitch. So what I did was I did two rows of, zoom back out again, two rows of ivory, two rows of the light pink, and then I changed it up a little with the last two rows. So we need to do one more row with the pink. I'm just going to pause the video a second while I take a drink. I'm getting a bit croaky. That's better. So now I'm back at this... Uh, this point so I'm going to nearly did it wrong I'm going to go into my middle yarn over and pull it up I'm going to now do my two chains I think it also helps with it looking okay at the corner because you've got your two loops that's why I like doing it as well so I'm going to complete that with my two stitches and now on our side we have two spaces to go into. So we're going to do our first stitch as normal, yarn over twice and we're going to find the row beneath and we're going to go round that centre one again. So we're going to yarn over and pull right up and complete our treble US or double treble UK and then complete our cluster like that. So now we're going to go into this one and go into this one, pull it up and complete our stitch, complete our cluster and then we're going to do our corner just as normal and that's how we're going to do the sides on this round. just finish this corner and we'll take a look at it pull that out a little bit so now as you can see we're going either side of the ones we've done before and that will happen on the next round it'll be either side and we'll go into this one so that's how it's going to work out. So I'm going to pause the video now and I will meet up with you when I get back to finish this corner. But you just need to repeat these sides exactly the same as you have done here and repeat the corners. And um, I'll catch up with you again at this point. So I've made it all the way around and I just need now to complete this corner by doing my three in here and yarn over and going into this one again let's zoom in a bit because it's hard to see anyway with the light colors so there we go we go into that top chain now I'm going to change color because I've done my two rows you can always see at the corner how many rows you've done even if this looks a little confusing here but you can always tell by the amount of corners that you have so I've gone I did two rows of this light pink so I'm just going to snip this colour off. Let's zoom back out again. 
I just need to pick that up. Move it out of the way. I'm finished with that colour for now. And bring in my darker colour. This is actually a really lovely pink. Just um, pull out some yarn while uh, I can. Okay, and so now, exactly the same way as before, I'm going to change colour. Just hold on to that a moment. And then bring that one in and hold them both securely there. Yarn over and pull through. I'm going to turn it over. And unfortunately with this one, you do have a fair amount of tails to um, sew in. Not, not a ridiculous amount, but because you can only work over them a little way, you do need to sew them in. But I think it's just become my new favourite square this and so um or new favourite blanket so I kind of don't mind the fact that I've got to do that and that's what it looks like on the reverse side lots of little squares but um there's all my ends so it's not a ridiculous amount you can always just snip this one off because it's gone all the way around but you do have a few a few to sew in so right so now I've got my new colour I'm going to get my ends out of the way so they don't confuse. And I'm going to go back in there, yarn up over and pull it up, and do my two chain. And then complete my, th my cluster of three with my two stitches. So you can't really work over that tail, it's still hanging out. So. It's a lot of sewing, but never mind. Well, not a lot. More than I'd like, though. So anyway, now we're going to do our sides. Same as we did before, but we've got a, this, this one here is slightly different. So I'll do this one with you. So we're going to start off exactly the same as before. Go around twice. Find the center of the one beneath, which is now our pink. And don't forget to pull it up. Because even if you do pull up, it still dips down a little, but we can stop it as much as we can. Then we go back in and finish our third stitch. And now we go to the next gap. Space, should I say. Yarn round twice. And now we're going to go into this one that's already sticking up. Because we're just going back into that one. and complete it with our third stitch so you can see we've just gone into that one and now we're going into a new one again because when you get to the corners you're always going into a fresh one I'm sitting on my yarn so the row beneath our space going round the middle stitch pull it up and complete our stitch so that center stitch really is the only difference that we have for this whole side we're just making more each time we go round as you do on a normal granny square but um, this one is slightly slightly different granny square with muscles so there we go that's what it's looking like now we're going in between as no our normal spaces and then we're following on with our one beneath that's already a long stitch and that's how we're going to carry on so we're going to repeat this side again and our corners and I'm going to pause the video and I'll catch up with you again when I get to this point if there's anything you don't understand then by all means just just rewind slightly and watch this bit again but it's um i'm sure you've you're fine so i'm going to carry on now i'll catch up with you when we're going to finish off this corner i've made it all the way around just going to finish off the last part of the corner again i'm just going to go into that top chain just got to find it there it is and not changing color so now 
that's basically how we're going to continue. We're just going to continue and it's going to be getting bigger. So with our darker pink, I have done three rounds. Don't forget, you can count them by looking at the corners. So that's one. So now I'm going to do two more rows in this pink, exactly the same as I did before. Carrying on with my seamless corner. So if you look at this one, all of the corners absolutely identical and you can't tell where the joins are until you turn it over and find them on this one. But they're all exactly the same and I prefer it that way. So now I'm going to carry on and this time around you'll be going into this stitch here. So we'll do one side and once you're used to the changes I will um, pause it and meet up with you when I've done both my rounds. So this one you're looking at always the cluster beneath the space you're in. So it's the corners always a fresh one remember. Don't forget to pull up each time. I think my hook is getting a bit squeaky again. It wasn't when I was just sitting down and doing it. It's because the way that I hold it when I'm doing tutorials. So now we're going to remember it's the centre one beneath the space we're in, which is this one here. So we're going to go behind there, grab it, pull it up and complete our stitch. Go back in to the space and complete it. So that's all we're doing, exactly the same as before. It just looks different because we're using a different colour. But it's exactly the same as before, but we've got more of the ones that are already raised each time we go around. So this one, as it was the corner, it's a fresh one. Just a normal UK treble to go into, or US double. Um, so then that's it. So we're just going to do our corner, and that's our first side complete. And I need to pull out some more yarn, it's getting tight. Which is horrible. And then I'll stop and we'll have a look at it. My eyes are going blurry when I'm looking through the camera. I hope it's my eyes. Okay, so there we are. And that's taking shape now. So on our next rounds, we'll be picking up these ones in between. And that's how it will continue to grow so I'm going to pause it now and I'll catch up with you not when I get back to this corner but when I get back to the next one so I want you to do to finish this round off and then do a whole new round in the same color and I'll meet up with you at the corner of the beginning and the end of the next round okay so I have done all of that round and another one besides so I've got one, two, three rounds of this darker pink. So I'm just going to zoom in so I can see my corner. And I'm going to join my corner, same as before, going into that top chain, but I'm going to change color. So I'm gonna cut that off. Now I just need to wind this yarn because um, there's a bit out. So bear with me a second while I just take this away. And now I'm going to rejoin the same colour at the start, that um, ivory colour. So I'm going to hold on to that just as I did before. I'm going to zip it zoomed in and bring in my new colour, hold on to them and just finish off my stitch with that colour and secure this one. Okay, nearly there. Okay, so now, just as I did with that darker pink round, I'm going to do three rounds in this um, ivory colour. And I did 
experiment by making the last round just a normal granny stitch round. It didn't look right at all. So um, I undid that. And so what I've done is another three rounds, exactly the same in um, the ivory. So as we started with the ivory, we finished with the ivory. So I go back into my space, getting tangled up here a little bit. Back into my space, yarn over and pull it up. Complete my two chain and then my next two stitches to do my half a corner. Okay, so now I'm just going to carry on as I have been going into my spaces to the stitches below and I'm going to do three rounds in this colour. So they're exactly the same as all of these rounds except, you know, obviously you get, you're gaining each time and you still need to keep pulling up. Um, it's actually quite straight but um, if you didn't pull up then it does start to dip down. It will right itself even though I pull up quite a long way it still dips a little bit not too much but it does a little bit and once you're sewing it all together or crocheting together and you combine it with your other squares it you do lose that so I don't think you need to watch me do any of these rounds because they're exactly the same as the previous so I'm going to pause the video and I'll catch up with you when we get to the very last um, round just before we join the corner because there's something different I need to show you. So I shall catch up with you once I've done three in this lovely ivory. Okay, so I have done my three rounds of this ivory colour and that completes it. And as you can see, it kind of does pull down just a little bit. But what I normally do is just give it a little tug and it, if you've pulled up enough, then it's it's fine. So all I now have to do is complete this corner. So I'm going to do my three stitches to um, complete that cluster. And because it's now the end, we're not going any further. Instead of joining the way I was, I'm just going to join by doing one chain and slip stitching into the top chain. And then snipping off my yarn and ending off. So that way, that corner is identical to the others and it's it's finished. So that's um, the end of this part of the crochet along. And um, all you need to do now is to make as many squares as you want to. And I think that mine will be perfect three squares across and four squares down because it is actually large so it once i've got a border on that that will be big enough to go onto a pram push chair or a car seat if i were making this for a child's cot or bed i would go further and further but um so i'm going to carry on now make my squares and uh, i will see you on the next part of the crochet along thank you so much for watching and bye for now